Malaysian Borneo, known as the most biodiverse environment in the world. Some of the most critically endangered animal species live here. But is it on borrowed time? Dr. Wong Suti has dedicated his life to the forest and the animals therein. Is it one man's fight against time? The Borneo Sunbeck Conservation Center is the center that I set up to conserve sunbeck through holistic and pragmatic approaches. In 2008, Dr. Wong founded the Borneo Sun Bear Conservation Center in Sepulok, a zoological center for protection and conservation of the Malayan sun bear. The restricted area. Together with the organization Land Empowerment Animals People, the Sabah Wildlife Department and the Sabah Forestry Department, it is a holistic approach to conserve the endangered species. The Malayan sun bear, or the sun bear, is the smallest member of the bear family. They are easily distinguishable by their bib-shaped golden or white patch on their chest. These adorable bears are the least studied out of all eight existing bear species. Maybe this is due to their shy nature and the type of habitat they reside. Remote, dense, lowland forests of Southeast Asia. Perhaps this became a challenge for Dr. Wong. Back in 1995, when I was doing my undergraduate degree in the United States University of Montana, I met a professor at a time who was looking for a Malaysian students to do a study on sun bears. And I have had long interest on working with animals, working with wildlife, and then I think you know, the opportunity was given to me and then I grabbed the opportunity and to a point there's no turning back for me. The sun bear faces multiple threats to its existence and the reasons are many. However, all the sun bears in Dr. Wong's care are victims of pouching. Sun bears are all often sun bears where mother being brutally killed by poachers, uh, for meat, for the gallbladder, for their body parts uh, to sell for profit, and then uh, and then and then the baby are being sold as pets uh, to make money, or being captured as their own house pets, and all of these are illegal. So when the wildlife department rescue, confiscate these baby bears or adult bears that was kept in captivity, uh, they are sent to here and then we help the wildlife departments taking care of them and conduct a series of conservation works uh, to help those bears, including rehabilitations and release back into the wild. Dr. Wong is showing us around the grounds that are a part of the Sepalak Kabili Forest Reserve. Yeah, so those are the, those are the bear nests. Here the sun bears have the possibility to adapt to the nature and the forest after being kept as pets. The heart of the operation is the bear house. Oh, they don't like you. The bears are extremely cautious about their surroundings, and the reaction when they come in is immediate. The scale of the operation becomes very obvious when Dr. Wong explains the feeding schedule and the enclosure system. The bears are kept separate depending on their gender, age, and personality. However, under the watchful eyes of Dr. Wong, everything works as a clock. So what about the bears? Are they happy in all this? So our bears are not happy, they are traumatized. And then, um, and then when they are here, we try our best to raise them. But again, these are wildlife. They deserve all the freedom that they have, but still they are confined in small cages, uh, in the bear house, in the den, yeah, in the, every night. And then during the daytime, they are let out in these forest enclosures. Uh, so they are, I would say not 100% happy, but we have no choice but to rescue this bear and try our best to give them as happy as possible. 
The goal is to take care of the sun bears, and they are not all suitable for a reintroduction into the wild. It comes down to each individual's chances of survival. So over the last 16 years, we have rescued 68 bears, and then 12 has been successfully rehabilitated and released back into the wild. And then when we release them back into the wild, they are subjected to all the threats that a wild bear may face, and so I cannot guarantee they can live happily ever after. On Borneo, that means deforestation and human impact on the environment. The dense rainforest is replaced with palm oil plantations. Obviously, this is not affecting just the sun bear, but a number of endangered species whose habitat keep disappearing. Uh, one thing for sure, compared to the wild bears, they are relatively safe over here. Uh, they can live a long life. You know, say for example, our oldest bear over here, Amako, he is uh, 31 years old this year. That's why we have to be very selective of which individual can be released back into the wild. All the adult bears that we rescue uh, as an adult are not releasable. So the hopes is on the bear cubs that we rescued and then uh, when they first came here, we tried to bond with them and after the bonding established, uh, their stress go down, they feed more, they grow fast and we can also walk them in the forest and have them to connect to the forest. Say for example, when they encounter a termite nest, they know that it is food. When they come across uh, invertebrates like uh, millipedes, they know it is food. They can dig for earthworms, they can climb trees and they can build nests and all of those are inert uh, behaviors but we need to give them the environment and the surrounding to be a wild bears again. It's okay, you want to climb the tree? Also can. Am I happy with what I've accomplished here? The answer might be not that happy, but I'm glad, okay? I'm not happy because the bears uh, end up here. You know, those bears are having a very difficult life where their mother has been brutally killed, they have been captured by poachers, they have been sell as commodity, they have been kept as private pets, and they have been exploited upon. And then, uh, so those bears are not happy, I cannot be happy. But I'm glad that they end up here where we can try our best to help them regain their second life. Okay, and then at the same time, uh, I'm glad that we have the resources and doing a series of work to help the wild population as well as the people on the ground so that they can choose not to become a poachers uh, and also help out with the garments to take care of these animals help out with the garments to raise the awareness of this endangered species. And then for me as a wildlife biologist as a, and a tropical forest ecologist, I know how important bears, uh, sun bears in the wild because they play many important ecological roles. Their presence will benefit both plants and animal species. So we have to do everything that we can uh, to ensure that they are continuous surviving in our forest ecosystems and perform all of the good things, all of the ecological roles that they used to do in the forest in order to keep the forest healthy. When the forest is healthy, the wildlife is happy and then the people will be benefiting from this too as well. Dr. Wong's extraordinary work never stops and his passion for the wildlife and nature is uncompromising. His never-ending desire to inspire other people is noticeable as we get ready to leave the conservation. And we let Dr. Wong get the last word. This is home. So, so it, this, this, this forest is really, you know, it's a really amazing forest in the sense that the forest, the rainforest in Borneo is the oldest rainforest in the world. How old? 130 million years old. Thank you for joining us on this very special visit to our good friend, Dr. Wong. What do you think about his work? Let us know in the comments.
Subscribe to meet more extraordinary people as well as visiting amazing destinations.